Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, just going to be taking a look at some YouGov poll numbers that we're getting out of the early primary states of South Carolina, Nevada, Iowa, and New Hampshire. Now we're coming up here on the third round of debates. Those are going to be on September 12th. Before heading into that debate, and it's just going to be one night this time around with 10 candidates on the stage, and it's going to be a bit different because we're getting the 10 upper tier or higher tier candidates all on the same debate stage. So it's going to be Bernie, Warren, Biden, Harris, all of the upper tier contenders on the same stage, which should be interesting and a bit different of a dynamic than what we had in the first two round of debates where it was two separate nights, which split up those upper tier candidates. I'm looking forward to seeing the dynamic that we get on the stage with these candidates all sharing the same stage. It could be really interesting. I can't wait to see how that plays out. But before heading into that particular debate, I'm going to make another video taking a look at the national numbers just to get a sense of where we are nationally for the Democratic primary. And then after that debate, once we start getting more polls in, we can kind of compare and contrast and see what kind of changes that we're seeing in the numbers. But in today's video, like I said, touching on those four early primary states, these ones coming from YouGov. And I'm just going to go right in the order of how these states are going to take place in caucus and primary season. So starting off here with Iowa. 835 likely voters and Biden and Sanders leading the pack within the margin of error of each other right at the top Biden at 29 percent Bernie Sanders at 26 percentage points and actually heading into Iowa I expect Sanders more likely than any of the other candidates to potentially outperform his polling specifically in caucus states when we take a look at Iowa and caucuses not nearly as many people vote. It's very politically active individuals, which tends to help Sanders. That was the case back in 2016 in his, in his head-to-head matchup against Hillary Clinton. And we'll see if that's the case again this time around. We'll get a sense of that very early on, right out of the gate in the state of Iowa. And Sanders right there at 26 percentage points, three points behind Biden. And then there's a little bit of a gap between Biden and Sanders before we get to Warren at 17 percentage points. All of the candidates above the 15 point mark that you need to get to to be part of those candidates that split up the all important pledge delegates. If you don't get above that 15 percentage point threshold, then you're going to be sitting at zero pledge delegates after this first round of the caucuses in Iowa. Moving on to the second state that we'd be heading to, and that's New Hampshire. The top three candidates, all well within the margin of error of each other, extremely competitive. You have Warren at 27 percentage points, Biden at 26, Sanders at 25. This was 526 likely voters in the state of New Hampshire. And then again, we get quite a drop off from the rest of the pack. And I'm kind of getting the sense that this is pretty much shaping in to a three-horse race between Biden, Sanders, and Warren. That's what we're getting in poll after poll, where they're pretty much the only candidates that are getting consistently double digits and well above that 15 percentage point threshold. Now, behind them, you have Buttigieg and Harris at eight and seven percentage points, respectively, and then quite a drop-off from that point forward. And then after New Hampshire, we're heading in to South Carolina, a southeastern state, where in a Democratic primary, there's a large influence of African-American voters, which Joe Biden tends to do very well. That's what we're seeing in poll after poll, and almost certainly a state that he is going to win really well in this poll. He's 25 percentage points above the second place spot. So you have Biden at 43 percentage points, Sanders at 18 percent. Now, when we take a look back at 2016, the establishment Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton did much better in the southeastern states, doing very well amongst those African-American voters. And Biden kind of taking the mantle of the types of voters that voted for Hillary Clinton back in 2016. So you would expect him to do well in states where Clinton did well, South Carolina being one of those. Also Biden's attachment to former President Barack Obama, who is very popular amongst those African-American voters, also gives him a boost likely in these areas. Now, Sanders, he's putting in a lot more resources, time and effort to do better in South Carolina this time around than what he did back in 2016. We'll see if his efforts pay off once this primary rolls 
polls in and him and Biden, the only candidates in this poll that are above that 15 percentage point threshold. Warren almost right about there at 14 percentage points. Then Harris at seven, Buttigieg at four, and then all the other candidates at two percentage points or less, particularly candidates like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, really hoping to do well amongst African-American voters, which they'll be able to tell if they're doing it once we hit South Carolina. Not so great for them in this result, but we still have a lot of runway to go before we get to this particular primary. So the still they still have a lot of time left to try to win over these types of voters. We'll see if they're successful in doing that or not. But I'm skeptical at this point in time. Harris had that initial bump after the first debate, but then she really receded after a weak performance in the second debate. We'll see what she's able to do here in the upcoming third debate, if she's able to regain some of that support or not. But she's kind of a flash in the pan there for about a month, but she has definitely taken quite a step back since then. We'll see if she's able to recover at any point or if she continues to fade. So then after South Carolina, we're heading out west to the state of Nevada. And this is where the Latino vote comes into play a bit more. And in general, in the polls that we see, Sanders does pretty well amongst Latino voters. He's winning in this Nevada poll here, uh, taken of 624 likely voters. That South Carolina poll was 849 likely voters. But we see in first place, Sanders at 29 percentage points. Then within the margin of error, we have Biden within two percentage points at 27 points, a little bit behind Sanders, followed by Elizabeth Warren, who does get above that 15 percentage point threshold. And then again, the same story that we're getting in those other states where we have quite a gap between the upper three candidates and the rest of the field. It's followed by Harris, Buttigieg and O'Rourke who are at 6, 4, and 3 percentage points respectively. This is also a state where Harris would like to do well because it borders California where she is the senator from. Also, Nevada is going to be a state where Beto O'Rourke would like to do well because his play to try to go for the 2020 nomination is the fact that he could potentially do really well in the American Southwest, which is a region where Democrats have been gaining in. Of course, the former congressman there from El Paso, Texas. Uh, but We'll see if that is the case or not. O'Rourke's presidential campaign hasn't been going very well up to this point in time, and he definitely hasn't been able to capture lightning in a bottle going for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination like he had when he was running his Senate race in Texas against Ted Cruz. So those are all the numbers here. And if this is how things ended up playing out, you'd get a situation where Biden would be in first place amongst the overall pledge delegates based on the strength of a South Carolina win, but Sanders would be right there and then Warren would be in third place in this scenario. Again, if this is how the numbers were to play out. And we still have a long way to go before we get to these caucuses and primaries, but I love looking at these state-specific results because you can take a look at all of the national polls you want, and it's important to kind of see how the nation as a whole is viewing these 2020 candidates, but there isn't going to be a national primary. It's going to be state by state and how you do in those specific states can have an effect on either positive or negative momentum going into results after that. So that's why it's so important to take a look and note how these specifically early primary states are going with the poll numbers. So that's going to wrap this one up, guys. I appreciate you stopping on in. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more of this type of content in the future. And I hope to see you guys back here for my next video.